Welcome YouTube friends and family to today's edition of the Wellness Homesteader. So I'm going to tell you in advance, today's video may be a little shorter than what my normal videos are. And I'm just gonna go ahead and share with you some things that are going on right now. So if I disappear and don't have a video on a regularly scheduled day, you will understand. So I've shared in many videos that my mom is 86. She does have what's called vascular dementia. So it's not dementia, the Alzheimer's type. It has to do with poor blood flow to the brain. But just because my mom has vascular dementia does not mean that she couldn't develop some additional type of dementia such as Alzheimer's. Uh, starting New Year's Day, mom set off her security system and the police had to come out because she had accidentally put her phone on vibrate. And when the security system company was calling her <laughs> to see if it was a true emergency, of course, she wasn't answering the phone. Um, the police will give two false alarms within a 12 month rolling period. And last night, once again, my mom set off the security system. So um, the decision has been made and my mom is, thank you Lord, willing that um, my mom is going to go to an assisted living. Okay guys, my apologies. Uh, it, it's just an emotional time for me. And um, <clears throat> I could really use your prayers. Um, the good part of it is mom is finally willing and she has been super resistant saying, you know, that she's not going to um, ever leave her home. And I do understand that. I'm a very independent person. Um, I've been divorced for like 26 years. So I'm accustomed to living alone, but my mom's confusion just continues to escalate. Her safety awareness is very poor. She does get lonely. Uh, I do have a caregiver 12 or 14 days. I fill in the other two days, but it's only for short periods of time. So when the caregiver isn't there or I'm not there, that seems to be when mom's confusion sets in. So I'm going to be spending some time and guys, I'm sorry about being a crybaby. <clears throat> Looking at some assisted livings by myself first. The last thing I want to do is take my mom into a facility because I don't know a lot about local facilities and it be dirty or unpleasant. You know, I need to weed those out. I would like to be able to give her a choice of at least two facilities to choose from, but I, I wasn't sure, you know, last night she was like, absolutely, I need to go to a facility. And I thought, yeah, she's gonna sleep on it and say something different this morning. This morning, the very first thing she said to me was, um, the time has come and I'm ready. So that I will need to um, sell her home and whatever she's not able to take with, to the facility, then that will also have to be, you know, like an estate sale type thing. So if you all could just keep both my mom and myself in your thoughts and prayers, I would definitely appreciate it. I'm feeling a little overwhelmed this morning, so I wasn't going to do a video because I knew I'd cry like a big crybaby that I am. I'm so sorry. So let me try to get my mind on something else. I will share something with you that I found at Valley Thrift. And I'm gonna do a shout out. Hi, Tina. <laughs> Tina and I used to work together and um, she lives locally uh, to me. And so Tina, if you've never been to Valley Thrift, it is a must go, it's on Woodman. So anyway, I found this really cool wooden tissue box and it opens like this. So you take, I mean, tissue boxes have gotten so much bigger, you know, it's always like, the mega box. So I just took the tissues, the Walmart brand tissues out of the box and put them in this. And guys, incidentally, I totally love the Walmart brand tissues. If 
if I did not know that they were Walmart brand, I would swear they were like Kleenex or Puffs brand. And they even had like, if you like them with lotion or aloe, they had those as well. So I just thought this was lovely. I'm not a real big fan of yellow, but it does have pink flowers. So yes, that was one of my finds. And I think, okay, here you go. <laughs> I did disinfect this, I promise. $1.99 is all I paid for this. And I just thought it was so cool. So anyway, all right, guys, second thing, got the mom thing out of the way. Um, I did want to share with you that I've been crocheting from Vintage Patterns, and I had put a little um, post up in the community tab, which a lot of you commented on. So here is the finished flower. Is that not so pretty? And this was the yarn scraps I had lying around. It did not take two full skeins. I could get two pot holders out. So I'm gonna be making some more. Drop me a comment below. I I would make it an additional video because not everyone loves like crafts and, and crocheting. But if you would like me to do a video on how to crochet your own, very pretty, and it even has a hanging loop, guys hot pads um, from Vintage Patterns, let me know. So today, I want to share first of all, some of my thoughts about the Great Depression. <laughs> and I'm trying not to be depressed, kind of goes along with how I feel today. But I had mentioned that we would be doing some Depression era cooking. And I have to tell you guys, I am not in the mood to cook today. I put roast potatoes, carrots, and onions in my crock pot. So uh, I did that before I started thinking about what video I was going to do today. So we're going to talk about depression era cooking. I'm going to share a book with you. I want to share some of my personal thoughts about the depression and how it parallels with what we're going through today. But I was looking for some photographs from the depression and here's what i can tell you my father was born in 1932 god rest his soul my mom in 1935 however so they they were born and lived through much of the depression in the area they lived in eastern kentucky and appalachia so that area remained very depressed um past the depression and it's just an area that has a lot of poverty. So as I was doing my research and I was looking at depression era recipes, I thought, I've eaten this way my whole life. You know, that's how my mom cooked. And it, it really struck home with me that yes, my grandma Victoria had children to feed. My grandma Elizabeth, she had, um, well, seven living children to feed, you know, and they, they worked the farm and they were hungry. So um, they both did a lot of depression era type cooking. And then my mother carried some of those recipes through my childhood. So I just thought these pictures were so sweet and I wanna share them. So this has kind of discolored, um, that's my daddy and my mommy. And I will share, <laughs> that my dad was drafted, so he was 18, my mom was 15 when they got married. I, not because they had to get married, but back then that's what they did. So this is just one of those um, like photo booths that you could go in. My mom had some pretty banging hair, didn't she? This is from 1950, mom's school picture. Look at that, isn't that lovely? And I believe, if you notice the necklace, I believe that's Grandma Victoria's necklace. I'm sorry, there's such a glare that I now have. I thought this really epitomized um, kind of how they lived and they did both grow up very poor. This is my dad. And you notice that he's posing, this is tobacco. If you've never seen tobacco growing, so um, his dad was a Baptist minister and a tobacco farmer. That just seems odd. But they used a lot of those backdrops, such as the tobacco field, for their photographs. So that's my mom and dad. I would love to have some of my mom's clothes, but my mom's so teeny tiny, none of them would fit. 
Here's a picture in front of a car of mom and dad. My mom had that pretty, pretty curly hair too. Had to throw this one in. This is my grandma Victoria. Look at her dress. I never saw either of my grandmothers wear slacks. Um, this is after my mom and dad were married. My dad is in uniform. My mom doesn't look too happy, but um, I like that. And then this one was taken in 1968. And that's me, guys. Wish my hair was still that blonde. Look at that. That is, I remember that day. It's one of my first memories. So I would have been, well, that can't be right. I wasn't seven years old. It's probably when it got developed. <laughs> I, I, I think I was about four, but I do remember that day because I had some really cute shoes, guys, and I remember my shoes. Hello, Frankie. He has to, do you want to say hi to the peoples? Do you want to say hello? Oh, my leg's stuck. Come here. No? Okay. He's like, I, I'm just going to lay on the table whether you want me to or not. So let's talk a little bit about the Great Depression. So I guess what I learned today was sometimes the old-fashioned ways are the best ways. And as I did my research and also um, I'm going to share this book with you here in just a moment, um, I thought, wow, these principles are quite similar to today's principles. You know, I know we're not dealing with um, the depression per se, like happened back in 29, but we are dealing with supply chain issues that are causing us to be a little more creative with our cooking and our purchases and finding ways to stretch that dollar because prices are quite high. And while there isn't rationing coupons, how many of you have gone into a store and saw limit one pack of toilet paper or, pardon me, limit three packages of meat? So I think in a way, some of the things that we're going through with the pandemic is similar to the Great Depression. I know I am really, really feeling the pinch financially. And... <sighs> I was just shocked at how much I spent and I shared my grocery haul. Um, and I thought, you know, I'm going to start doing my depression era research because I think there are principles that we can adapt to today's living to really save ourselves money. I just paid my heating bill and guys, I keep my heat at 62, never higher during the day. And then it shuts off about seven o'clock at night down to 58 at night. I'm warm in bed. I'm never cold. I am cold during the day. And my bill was still $103, $103. Did I use a whole bunch more natural gas? No, it wasn't that. The reason is the price per CFG cubic foot of gas has gone way up. So even though I've tried to go with a company that gives you the best deal, prices are just out of sight. So back to the depression. So I think when people think of the Great Depression, they think of it just being in the US, but it was a severe and a worldwide depression. It happened mostly in the 30s. Different countries experienced different um, dates of what they would consider their Great Depression. Um, it generally started in 1929 and generally ended in the late 30s. In the United States, we had that major fall in the stock market prices starting September 4th, 1929, and then Black Tuesday, the big crash, was October of 1929. So worldwide between 29 and 32, and guys, this is super important, our gross domestic product fell 15%, 15%. You may think, well, that's not that much. Just to compare, if you all remember 2008, 2009, I know my 401k took a huge hit. Um, our gross domestic product fell 1%. And that was a definite recession was 2008 and nine. So 
why, why did the depression happen? Well, there's all these theories and I didn't want to get into that, but some say that it was the stock market crashing. Others say the crash of the stock market is just a symptom of the Great Depression. But by far and large, most people believe that there was a loss of confidence in the economy, in the government, that just kind of snowballed and led to this big crash. So what happened? What were the effects of the Great Depression? International trade fell more than 50%. And what followed the Great Depression? World War II. So there was a lot of country squabbling and unrest. U.S. unemployment was 23%. And in some countries, it was as high as 33% construction of anything new virtually halted and farms really suffered as well because prices fell by 60 percent so it was no longer um, beneficial to be a farmer so there was a loss of a lot of large farming industry the dow jones went from 381 to 198 over a two-month period but that wasn't the low. It hit the low of 41, 41 guys in 1932. So clearly our economy um, was in the toilet. <laughs> and I think it is one of the greatest fears that people have of today. You know, right now, thank the Lord, it's a seller's market for homes. It is definitely not a buyer's market. Um, Interest rates are very low, but they're talking about bringing up interest rates as well. So just with this pandemic, with supply chain issues, with the debt that we have, um, our government's debt, you know, all of those things are very concerning. And it does give you pause to try to think of ways that you can be a little more frugal and efficient in your cooking. So let's get into what people cooked during the Great Depression. So I purchased this book quite a while back and it's called Hard Times Cookbook with Back to Basics Great Depression Cooking by Anna Patterson. It's a very thin book. Guys, <laughs> I do not recommend this book. Um, I will link it below. It's, if you can tell, it's very poorly done. The pictures are it's looking clearer in the camera, but very blurry. Um, like this whole page just says, nothing is more basic than hamburger. <laughs> but there are a few good tidbits in here. It is an interesting read. And it is written by a lady who did not grow up in the Depression, but her parents did. All right, so what did people cook and eat? So it was a time of hardship but it was also a time of creativity. You know, necessity is the mother of invention, so to speak. So between limited funds, government imposed food rationing, cooks began to do things like, let's learn how to make a cake without butter or eggs. Let's use crackers for a pie crust instead of uh, having to use flour, butter, those types of products. So some of the ingredients that were in short supply or very pricey or being rationed was meat. Um, so there was a lot of rice, beans, and cheese. Okay, I, I'm feeling a little Dave Ramsey here. So not unlike what a lot of us preppers have on our pantry shelves. Um, there was also use of a lot of canned and dried foods that didn't require refrigeration. So think of uh, dried chipped beef. <laughs> and even after the depression, because of the war, dairy, butter, and eggs were rationed. So there were a lot of what I consider to be basics or what I would include in my pantry challenge, allowable purchases that were not readily available and affordable during the Great Depression. So what were some typical meals? I found this interesting. Have y'all ever heard of Hoover Stew? 
I haven't. It is macaroni, canned tomatoes, canned corn, canned beans, and hot dogs. So hot dogs were plentiful, I guess, in the Depression. That was one kind of meat that you could get. Uh, another hot dog meal, fried potatoes and onions topped with hot dog. Uh, I mentioned the dried chip beef. Um, they would cream it and put it on toast or make fondue out of it. So you could dip like cubes of bread into this creamy gravy type mixture. Meatless meals were common. There's a Pennsylvania Dutch dish of bread, eggs, and asparagus. There was fried cabbage with pasta. Okay, now that does not sound good to me. I love fried cabbage, but not with pasta. Lots of soups with vegetables, like a potato soup, uh, were common. And then meat patties made from meat potatoes and some other veg thrown in to kind of stretch that meat to uh, fill the belly but not use up too much meat and also spaghetti made with bacon now I love bacon but bacon spaghetti sounds a little odd to me hold tight a minute Frankie's crying let me see what the problem my is. apologies guys I, I kitties sometimes they just meow a lot so we talked about some of some common main dishes. So side dishes, many came from home gardens. So there were a lot of cucumber dishes made into like a little salad. Um, hot water cornbread, which was simply cornmeal, oil, and hot water. Potato pancakes. I like some potato pancakes. Smothered cabbage, which was cabbage, oil, and then like a ham hock because didn't have, you know, the luxury of having a whole ham, an onion, and often foraged greens like dandelion greens for to fill that need for some fresh tasting food. Desserts is the area I think that they were the most creative in. So there is a chocolate depression cake, and it is also called wacky cake. They didn't always have leavening, so baking powder to make the cake rise. So this was made from baking soda and vinegar and that reaction caused the cake to rise. I have had wacky cake. It is um, not super sweet and it's just a nice like bread, chocolate bread to have with coffee or tea. Uh, they learned how to make white cake without using eggs. And then there's a depression cake which was made from brown sugar, water, oil, raisins, and then warm spices like cinnamon, nutmeg, etc. This does not sound good. <laughs> Oatmeal cookies made with bacon grease instead of butter. Now, if you were making them like savory, I could see bacon and oatmeal going together, but cookies made with bacon grease, I don't think so. Vinegar pie, which is just a lot of sugar, hot water and vinegar in a pie crust. And then a surprise spice cake made with, wait for it, tomato soup, guys, tomato soup. And it, I've seen it in pictures, it's like red, like tomato soup, but supposedly very good. Um, this book did have one really good tip in it and I wanted to read it to you. So this gal says that she uses the magic grocery list and she feels like if she shops from this, she can always feed herself and her family. So here's here we go. There are 16 things. Bread, milk, preferably powdered milk, sack of potatoes, sack of onions. You know, if you have potatoes and onions, you can make things taste good and it really does stretch your meal. Can of tomato juice. I guess for bacon spaghetti, I don't know. Coffee, tea, basic staples like self-rising flour, margarine, shortening lard, jelly, spices such as salt, pepper, and chili powder, mustard, mayonnaise, or salad dressing, rice and macaroni, dry beans, any kind, oats, and for meat, whole chicken, hamburger, tuna, hot dogs, and cheese, canned corn, 
green beans and assorted canned vegetables, one food that is a treat for that month like pizza, fruit that is in season. So this is her magic solution. So as I said, this book is super basic. Um, not a lot of recipes that I found would be interesting for us to cook. So I want to put this out for a vote, guys. So I have three dishes and I will let you all vote. Whatever you decide, that's what I'll make for our first Depression Era cooking. So number one is end of the month soup. So you take whatever you have in your refrigerator, you know, a little bit of green beans and corn that are left over, um, some of the roast that's left over, whatever is in your refrigerator that's kind of left over, make a soup out of it. And you can also add some noodles or macaroni to make it more filling. Number two is a tuna dinner. So think, and I did get that recipe from this book, think um, tuna casserole. This has potatoes, um, margarine, flour, salt, pepper, milk, cheese, onion, green pepper, canned tuna, and breadcrumbs. So that's an option. And then number three is one that I really like and enjoy, and it's called One Pot Spaghetti. This was something we had all the time when I was growing up, and it's a good filling dish, but it's made with some unusual ingredients. It's more like a goulash than what you would think of spaghetti, and you can certainly cut back the meat in it, and you can also use hamburger or ground pork. So three again, end of the month soup, Tuna casserole, we'll call it, or one pot spaghetti. Drop me a comment below. So I want to thank you all for bearing with me. This is not my typical video. Excuse me, I'm fighting the hiccups. Um, I just have a lot on my mind, guys. And, you know, how do you eat an elephant? One bite at a time. So that's what I'm going to have to do. So today I'm going to do my research and try to set up appointments at various facilities and try to uh, get some things lined up so that I can get mom moved sooner rather than later. Um, my biggest fear is that inner confusion and her poor safety awareness that she'll take a bad fall. I didn't share this, she fell before Christmas. Um, and hit her nose across here on a cement step. Thankfully, she didn't break any other bones. Pretty sure she probably broke her nose, but they don't really do anything for that anyway. Um, you know, so she's been dealing with a, a bruised and swollen nose for a while. So I just want my mom safe and well cared for. And I did offer, some of you may be wondering, I did offer, you know, did she want to move in with me? And the answer to that was, absolutely no. And, and I appreciate that because I don't know if that's the best solution. It would certainly change my life. And I think it will be good for my mom to be able to socialize with others who have the same memory type issues that are our, her own age and um, have more of a social life. She's not going to have that here. And my mom's a handful, guys. It would not be easy. So anyway, enough of that. If by chance I don't pop up with a video on a regularly scheduled day, I think you'll understand now. Something came up and I've just got my hands full. So if you haven't already, please go ahead and smash that like button. If you know someone who is, would be interested in depression era cooking and would like to have a voice and a vote for what I make, um, definitely share my video. You know, there's a little button that says share with an arrow and you press that button, it'll give you the options of how you can share it. So as always, be well, be healthy, be blessed, and I will see you all, Lord willing, on Saturday. Take care.